Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I've been looking forward to talking about this video ever since I mapped out the content for this video earlier this afternoon. It's a piece from Daily Hoddle titled, XRP is lagging behind Bitcoin and crypto market. Here's what could trigger long-awaited ripple effect. Can we run through that? I've got a few tweets from the beloved XRP community, and I'm going to wrap up the video with another Ripple-related piece. This from be Crypto. It's titled, RippleNet partner Instarim rebrands to Neom. I guess that's how it's said. I don't really know. I tell you, all these, these new uh, tech-related companies and associated with cryptocurrency in particular, fintech, all that stuff, they, they create names of their companies that they have to know the average person will not know how to enunciate. Maybe they just get their chuckles out of it. So anyway, RippleNet partner Instagram rebrands to Neom to create world of open money. Now, before we get going here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would please ever so delicately tap that like button, but do not get all smashy smashy with it. No need. Just a delicate tap will be just as effective, and you won't look like a dork. Don't be smashing on your mouse trying to get that like there. And uh, go ahead... And uh, subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel if you are a proud member of the XRP community, as indeed I am. I'll tell you what, I follow like literally every XRP uh, every XRP YouTuber I'm aware of, I follow and subscribe to. And I, wish, I listen to them as many, as many of them as possible. Admittedly, since I spend hours per day now putting content together for this channel, it's a little less uh, than I used to, but... I listen a ton when I walk my dog, when I'm driving, when I, you know, can be cleaning around a home, stuff like that. Uh, walk around with AirPods. Always listening to my XRP YouTubers. So anyway, and I, oh, by the way, I mentioned this in another video today. Uh, Digital Asset Investor had his first live stream today. It went on about 45 minutes. That was a lot of fun. So showed his face too, except for it was a childhood picture. Womp womp. He tricked us. <laughs> it's good times though. Uh, let's go ahead and dig into this. Uh, let me scroll down here. Bitcoin has now rallied 175% from its 2019 bottom, soaring from 3,409. They mean 2018 bottom, but this is crypto media. No need for precision, or at least, or at least that was the low. The low was in December. That's why I want to say if it actually was still around there in in January, maybe they could technically be correct. But the bottom point is uh, is accepted to have had occurred. Just look at a chart. It happened in December. Anyway, so $3,409 to $9,408 at time of publishing, according to coinmarketcap.com. Uh, the rising Bitcoin tide has lifted a lot of crypto boats, including Ethereum, which shot from its yearly low of $103 to its current price of $183, a 77% increase. But the third largest crypto asset by market cap, XRP, is up a relatively weak 24% this year from its low of 23.9 cents to the current price of 29.84 cents. Now, I will say this. In traditional markets, if you look at, I know this wasn't a year-over-year -year return, but if you look at year-over-year -year returns of, let's say, the stock market, if you were to say 24%, my gosh, I'm telling you, the S&P 500 from 1957 through the end of 2018, um, you know, adjusting for inflation, it was at like right at 8%, you know, the, the S&P 500. So uh, 24 looking pretty, pretty, pretty good, right? Reasonable to say. And again, I know, not year over year, fine. But still, uh, you know, that, that said... Um, Look, as far as as far as XRP's performance for this arbitrarily chosen timeline relative to Bitcoin or Ethereum or pick your pick your cryptocurrency of choice, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And for those of you, um, there are new subscribers coming aboard all the time. For those of you that haven't heard me state yet, let me just make it clear. And this is a fact. I put data out there to show this. XRP out of all the top ten uh, cryptocurrencies is the second to least correlated to Bitcoin in terms of price action. Uh, the, the, mo the, the least correlated is, is uh, Stellar, but that's only when it's in the top 10. It is number 10 right now, unless it's changed, and I don't know. It can bump in and out of that. So uh, if, if it's bumped out of that, then XRP would be the most, uh, I'm sorry, the least 
uh, correlated to Bitcoin in terms of price action. So it just depends. So sometimes technically XRP is the least, it's just whatever. Cryptocurrency is volatile. We get that. Uh, so so think about that. It's only, I'm going from memory, it was like either 50 or 55% correlated. All the other cryptocurrencies substantially higher correlated. And that's why I pointed this out. And this is pure fact. So yes, admittedly, uh, XRP indeed is tethered to the price action of, of Bitcoin. But what happens, since it is the least correlated, what you will see is that you can go very long periods where it appears to not be paying attention to Bitcoin. You could have, the one that I love to cite the most is from May of 2017 to the December 2017 run where it started really taking off and then January ultimately hit its all-time high of $3.92, according to the live coin watch anyway. Um, it depends on the, the way you pull the data. You could be slightly higher, slightly less. Anyway, so a little shy $4 is the point. But again, from May to December 2017, that whole time period, XRP price, volatile, fine, but it changed within a, changed within a, a fair, fairly narrow bandwidth. And so relative to the other coins, it looked like nothing was going on board. And then I, I remember, being, and I was so new to crypto at the time, but I was watching YouTube videos, some people talking uh, early to closer to mid-December, not quite mid-December. I remember seeing people on YouTube making videos talking about how they were getting out of XRP. It's just not doing anything. People on Twitter saying this coin's not doing anything. Why am I wasting my time and money? I could have all these games with Bitcoin. And then what happened? A parabolic run up all the way up to almost four dollars in the span of a few weeks and that's why most of the activity in the world of crypto it happens on a select number of days on any given calendar year i've also pointed that out that's simple fact it really is and if you don't have exposure during those days because you're chasing after what fomoing into whatever's happening in the moment you're going to miss out on what happens that's why to me and this is not financial advice i want to be real clear no financial background here but for me it makes a ton of sense to just buy something that you believe in as it pertains to fundamentals and just hold just hold if you have high confidence that it's going to be there in 10 years why do you want to risk out missing on the select few days where there's there's tremendous run-ups in terms of price let everybody else do the FOMO. let everybody else do the panic selling if you believe in your invest if you do and this is not financial advice but if you happen to believe that it makes sense that it's going to be for the long haul then to me it makes sense to hold and for me the answer is a clear yes because my entire investment thesis is that utility matters and indeed will win the day so anyway peace continues here xrp's performance comes amid a steady stream of news from ripple which owns more than half of the total supply and consistently announces new investments designed to boost the digital assets ecosystem Meanwhile, Ripple denies that its routine sales of XRP have any impact on price. I really don't want to talk about that again, so I'm going to avoid it in this video. But of course, Ripple's XRP have no meaningful impact whatsoever in terms of price. The, the, just the, the percentage in terms of volume, it, it's, it's not even close to enough to, to have a, a meaningful impact. Anyway, uh, the situation is Reddit is wondering... What could trigger a catch-up rally? Not catch-up as in K-E-T-C-H-U-Up. Somebody heard it like that. I bet somebody did. But no, catch-up as in C-A-T-C-H-Up. Catch-up. Got it? In a new post on the Ripple subreddit, a user asks how increasing utility of XRP by banks, financial institutions, and tech startups could boost the price. The top answer from Redditor uh, Citricle M. Oh, and Citricle Mon, I guess that's how it said. I was debating that earlier internally. I don't know, Citricle Mon? Anyway, uh, points to the age-old concept of supply and demand and highlights long-term liquidity as the key. And here's a quote now. As utility increases, there will be more liquidity in the market, more buyers and sellers. This will attract market makers who want to make margins on trades. And in, okay, so that's a fair point. As, as long as there is actual adoption of the technology, more people will enter the market buying and selling, which increases liquidity. And liquidity begets liquidity. Uh, one of Ripple's co-founders, Chris Larson, stated that. That is a direct quote from Chris Larson. Liquidity begets liquidity. There's this. It's the same thing as a concept of a network effect uh, expanding as each increasing. As as uh, in terms of Ripple, look at that. So in terms of RippleNet, as each a new entity comes on board, whether it's a remittance company or another bank, the value of that network increases because you can interact with more more um, in institutions, remittance companies, whatever it is. So the network is always becoming that much more valuable. In the same sense, liquidity begets liquidity. As more liquidity comes on board, you can see there's opportunity to make money on the buying and selling. Uh, there will be business people that recognize that and will make money on the buying and selling as market makers. Liquidity. Right, And then the, the quote continues here. Market makers need to buy and hold onto large stacks of XRP and fiat, all different currencies, in order to smoothly fund their operations. These 
are some of the people who will be buying and holding XRP and pushing the price up. XRP utility is like a reef, and market makers are some of the fish that hang out in the reef. And this is an absolute fact here, okay? If you're going to be a market maker, you don't care what the price of XRP is, not really, because you're making your money on the fees associated with the buying and selling. But you are taking XRP out of the ecosystem. And consider right now that Ripple, think about this, seriously, what I'm about to say, think about this. Ripple has announced two XRapid corridors. It's now called on-demand liquidity, but XRapid, same thing, right? Utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. We've got US into Mexico, US into Philippines. Consider this. MoneyGram, a very large remittance company, fine. They operate in over 20,000 payment corridors. Think about that. And we're just talking about two that Ripple is going after right now. And you are going to need market makers providing liquidity in all of those corridors. All of them, right? If, if you want true interoperability, right, um, as it pertains to settlement, if you want to not use Nostro, you got to make that happen. And so you can imagine if that much, how much XRP is going to be have to have to be held by all these liquidity, the, you know, to, I'm sorry, in, in, uh, by market makers, and what's that going to do in, in terms of supply, the available supply? And then you figure there are all sorts of speculators like you and I because we're smart and we understand that uh, XRP has to be. Uh, it has to be used by businesses in order for these businesses to fulfill their business models, right? And so most of the XRP that's in existence, for, forget forget the escrow for it, let's forget that. The rest of the people speculating, people like you and I, most of that is not available for sale and exchange. And suddenly that 100 billion XRP, which sounds like a lot on the surface, really isn't that much. Especially when you consider that it's only divisible by 100, whereas, uh, so the smallest unit being a drop. And with Bitcoin, it's actually divisible by 100 resulting um or um yeah 100 million right yeah because it would yeah so xrp is divisible by a million uh bitcoin divisible by 100 million so the, the smallest unit of bitcoin being satoshi so there's actually in terms of drops versus satoshis there's only 47 times as many uh, xrp drops versus a bitcoin satoshi so there's, there's really not that much more out there to begin with and look at the usage so if if it is genuinely adopted the way that we expect it to and hope that it will be and we have indications that it's working right now, so I'm going to keep watching that. And if it ever goes south, believe me, I'm going to be telling you. Uh, I, but I am Mr. XRP Bull, and I see nothing but sunshine on the horizon there. But, um, where did I just leave off here? Do, do, do. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, the user suggests that a boost in liquidity and utility could trigger renewed rounds of speculation on the future price of the digital asset. Yes, indeed. As liquidity increases and people see that XRP might be a useful asset for other tools as well, people will speculate that the price of XRP will be higher than it is today, and they will buy and hold XRP, taking it off the market and helping to encourage the prices to increase in the future, another type of fish in the reef. I, I, have, I have effectively been saying that, the same thing for the entirety of this channel. I'm, I'm telling it's so good to see other people getting this. I'm telling you this is this is what is this is how it works. This is how humans are operating. Indeed, people are speculating on the utility long term. And some people don't get the utility aspect of they're just gambling their money fine, but people are slowly over time figuring this out and that's why in slow motion XRP is decoupling from Bitcoin in terms of that price connectivity. Anyway, uh, in addition, the response spotlights Ripple's ongoing efforts to boost XRP over the long term, such as proposing stablecoin support on the XRP ledger. And here's a quote. Other uses of XRP may be created, a prime example being the on-ledger stablecoin suggested by David a few weeks ago. These stable coins are obviously useful in their own right as proxies for fiat, and the on-ledger mechanism for them exists uh, requires XRP to be locked up as collateral for them. This is another way that XRP is bought and held for long periods. Yeah, and then uh, Peace wraps up stating during the 2017 crypto bull run, XRP crawled behind the rest of the crypto market until suddenly surging from 23.4 cents to a high of $3.71 in less than a month. Whether past is prologue remains to be seen. There you go. I think it's cool stuff. All right, uh, check out this tweet. This is from, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, sir. Uh, Pierce O'Hagan, I hope I'm saying that right, but uh, tagged me along with Kevin Cage and um, at... Mr. Level Up and at XRP Community. Who got this one? I forget. Somebody got this. It just says XRP Community. I thought, eh, yeah, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Anyway, um, tweeted out, I just don't understand two things. Why is XRP not worth $100 already? And even more baffling, why does Kevin Cage not have a job in radio already? Just saying. And if you haven't heard Kevin Cage's voice, if, if you check out his channel, listen to him for like, a second and a half, and you will know what Pierce O'Hagan is talking about. <laughs> Got a buttery, silky, smooth voice. 
the envy of all other XRP YouTubers. But we, we have to work with what we're born with, right? So anyway, as far as XRP, why it's not $100? Look, well, the market simply hasn't figured out <laughs> like the long-term utility of the asset class. So I, I think it's just a, the function of we, we need to wait longer. I know, I know. You gotta be patient though, and I'm happy to be patient, I will say that. But anyway, thank you very much for tagging me. And here's a tweet from the Zerpinator. Okay guys, remember, so Swell by Ripple takes place on November 7th and 8th in beautiful Singapore. If you live in the United States West Coast, it will happen there on the 6th and 7th of November, roughly, just so you know. So there you go, I hadn't thought about that, but technically, a day sooner. How about that? So I thought I'd highlight that. Uh, thank you very much for tagging me there, Zerpinator. I do appreciate it. Then I got this next piece from XRP Crypto Wolf. You my boy. Thank you very much for uh, tagging me there. RippleNet partner Instarim rebrands to Neom to create new uh, world of uh, open money. Rather, a cross-border payments provider and RippleNet partner Instarim has announced its rebranding to become a part of Neom. The official statement highlighted that will uh, that while the uh, the rebrand was part of the strategy since its recent $41 million uh, funding round, Neom's goal is to create a world of open money, which will enable businesses to send, spend, and receive money easily from around the world. Initially, Instagram had entered into a strategic partnership with Ripple with the vision to facilitate quick and secure payouts for RippleNet members in Southeast Asia. The official announcements also quoted from Prajit Nanu, co-founder and CEO of Neom, who said, quote, as we look to the future, our strategy is to move beyond merely creating services on our own proprietary platform. We have worked really hard in the last four years to build new capabilities that open a world of possibilities in the global payments universe. And then the piece continues. Nanu also highlighted that rebranding of Instagram to Neom will express our broader capabilities to the world and to engage more directly to our existing and future enterprise partners. The, uh, the platform will allow these organizations to send, spend, and receive money as well as build new products without legacy system constraints. So very cool stuff. That's it for this video. I'm not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because if anything I say I write, that would be a very, very, very bad idea. And until next time, to the moon, Lambo.